Let's see, our next question is from James on portal circulation and leaky gut. Hi Rob, thanks for your detailed answer to my question about sun exposure in Q&A number seven. Um, following your book recommendations in Q&A number six, I hungrily delved into the lecture notes on human metabolism. Thanks Nikki. And within the first chapter, encountered some information that gave me reason to pause. The portal circulation. I'm certain that you can provide a more accurate and concise explanation of this system to your listeners that I than not than I can in this question, so I'll leave that to you if that's okay. My question is, given that all blood, and therefore solutes, from the intestines are drained through the portal vein and through the liver, filtering out excess substrates and removing toxins such as ammonia from the blood before it enters general circulation, how can leaky gut have such a damaging effect on the body? It seems to me that the liver is a vital backstop in this process, which is never mentioned when functional medicine practitioners talk about leaky gut. They give the impression that blood drains from the intestines straight into the into cardiovascular circulation, and these fuel substrates are clanking around in our arteries, causing inflammation, which seems not to be the case. Also, how does this impact the gut hypothesis of heart disease, highly simplified here, where endotoxins is said to pass through the mucosal membrane into circulation, binding with LDL cholesterol, being attacked and immobilized by immune cells and ultimately ending up being sequestered into an arterial plaque because the immune system cannot destroy cholesterol or unbind the endotoxin from it. Would the portal circulation not remove this endotoxin from the blood before it enters cardiovascular circulation and meets LDL particles? Is this disease process driven not only by a compromised intestinal lining, but also by inefficient liver function? Thank you for your time. Really appreciate your, your input. That's a great question. And this is kind of like, definitely like a 401 question. Like this is kind of- Super advanced. A, a, a Chris, <laughs> Chris Master John um, uh, area. Usually he's the one that delves into stuff like this, but it, it's a fantastic question. So for people that aren't familiar with this, the portal circulation is the kind of circulatory loop that drains the gut and goes, as, as uh, James. What's James said, largely to the liver. Uh, and, and we do get, uh, this is where like chylomicrons, the, the uh, packages of lipids are unstitched and reshuffled and, and put into triglycerides and into lipoproteins. Uh, proteins are, are kind of sorted and shuffled. Carbohydrates are stored at least in part in the liver and then also throughout the rest of the body. And that's actually a great example of this LPS story that, that James is alluding to. So the what he's asking here is a great question. Um, in this leaky gut story, there's this discussion around lipopolysaccharide, which is kind of the the um, cellular identification matrix around bacteria. And this stuff is incredibly inflammatory in all vertebrates. Like it sends the vertebrate immune system into a, a kind of an overdrive response. But James, you if we just subbed out LPS for carbohydrate. This pretty much answers the story. So although dietary carbohydrate fills some, potentially all of the liver glycogen, there's virtually always more that goes to the rest of the body. Mm -hmm. And so although it removes some, it does not remove all. In the case of this LPS story, in general, the liver should be effective. The liver in conjunction with the lipoproteins, the lipoproteins like LDL lipoprotein, LDL cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, these things bond to LPS and it tends to help in the detoxification of this substance. But if we have more LPS than what we're really able to deal liver with, then it, it, some and the rest liver handles some down. and then we get the, the spillover. And that's one piece of the story. Another piece of the story is that a lot of the lipid containing substances don't go directly into the portal system. It goes into the lymphatic system and the lymphatic system then dumps in right around the the aorta, and so it does make it into general circulation without going through the liver first. Mm -hmm. So that one year of medical school anatomy actually pays <laughs> off every once in a while. So um, it, it, this is a great question though. And it, so there, there are kind of two directions that the LPS story gets around the liver. The first one is that there may just be more occurring than what the liver can reasonably detoxify. And then the other part is the the the, uh, the lipid constituents that end up in the lymphatic system also end up dumped into general circulation, do ultimately make it into the liver, but that that's another spot where this stuff ends up. Yeah, but a really good question. And man, that lecture notes on human metabolism is just 
an outstanding book. Really, really good. It, 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 uh, it was oriented for um, individuals heading towards medical school. So it was kind of a an end of their senior year, like how to pull all the, the biochemistry, cellular biology, um, vertebrate physiology all together and make some sense of it. And the, the MD, PhD who put that book together, um, he, he oriented a bunch of like pharmaceuticals into it. He talked about statins. He talked about blood pressure meds. Like it's really an outstanding book. Yeah.